It's been at least 11 years since Malaysia initiated plans for a second MRT line in Klang Valley. But the MRT Putrajaya line is finally fully operational. We are here at the TRX station in the heart of KL and we've come to check out the extension that's just opened and is going to take us straight to Putrajaya Central. Come, let's take a ride with us. Let's start with the most important part first. The MRT Putrajaya line, as well as the feeder buses that support it, are currently free of charge until March 31st. To enjoy the free ride, you'll have to enter or exit at one of the stations along the line. It won't work if you say enter via one LRT line, hop onto the Putrajaya line via an interchange station and exit to another LRT line. You'll still get charged for your ride. The Putrajaya line has actually been open since June last year, but that was only for the first phase from Kwasa Damansara through Kepong to Kampong Batu. The second phase of the project takes the line straight to its namesake in Putrajaya, adding 38.7 kilometers and completing the 57.7 kilometer journey. There are a total of 24 stations added, making up the bulk of the 36 stations in total. Starting from the new cantonment station, the extension runs directly underneath Jalan Ipoh, now called Jalan Sultan Azlan Shah, before heading west along Jalan Tun Razak to serve the Titiwangsa and Kampung Baru areas. It then goes south along Jalan Binjai, through the affluent area near KLCC before reaching TRX. From there, it follows Jalan Sungai Besi, passing through Jalan Chan Saolin, then emerges from underground to serve the Kuchai Lama area. It then hops onto the Best Raya Highway and passes through Sungai Bersi, Serdang and Saiwajaya before finally ending at Putrajaya Central. The Putrajaya line uses four car train sets, manufactured by Hyundai Rotem, with a capacity of 1,200 passengers each. There are a total of 49 trains serving this line. The Putrajaya line has connections and interchanges with practically every rail service in the Klang Valley. You can hop onto the MRT Kajang line at the Kwasa Damansara station and here at TRX. You can also find connections to the KTM Port Klang line at Sungai Bulo and the Siri Damansara Timo stations, as well as the KTM Suramban line at Kampung Batu. The line also interchanges with the Ampang and Sri Petaling lines at Sungai Besi, Chan Saolin and Titi Wangsa, where it also interchanges with the KL monorail. There's also a connecting station with the Klana Jaya line at Ampang Park. But strangely, you have to tap out before tapping back in at the LRT station. The one rail line without a connection, except at the Putrajaya terminus, is KLIA Transit, which is to be expected given that the Putrajaya line is meant to run alongside as a slower but much more frequent way to get to the administrative capital. It took us around 25 minutes to get to Putrajaya from Sungai Bersi, whereas the same journey on KLIA Transit from the nearby Panda Tasik Latan station takes just 10 minutes. The main benefit is frequency. RapidKL says the train currently comes every 4 minutes during peak hours and 7 minutes during off-peak hours. By comparison, the KLIA Transit's frequency is 15 minutes during peak hours and a massive 30 minutes off-peak. Once RapidKL starts charging commuters money on April 1st, a full journey from Kwasa Damansara to Putrajaya Central will cost 6 ringgit and 90 cent. 5 ringgit 80 cent if you go cashless, while a trip from Sungai Bersi to Putrajaya will cost 3 ringgit and 70 cent or 3 ringgit 30 cent for cashless. That's much cheaper than KLIA Transit from Bandar Tasik Selatan to Putrajaya, which costs 8 ringgit. To get people to and from the stations, Rapid KL is providing feeder buses that cover a total of 350 kilometers. For those that want to drive to their station instead, there are parking lots at 17 stations with total capacity of 5,878 vehicles. And so here we are at Putrajaya Central. It took us less than 40 minutes to get here from TRX, which considering the distance and the amount of stops along the way is actually not too bad. And so that is everything you need to know about the second phase of the MRT Putrajaya line. Over to you now. Are you excited to test out the new trains? And if you have, I want to know your experience in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the notifications bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. As always, stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.